Hello, this is Tom Jenner, and this is my entry for the 555 uh, design competition. We'll be doing analog robotics, so you can learn uh, robots and electronics at the same time. So this is pretty much what we'll be going over right here. Um, feel free to use the pause button. Um, so I came up with this little board right here, a uh, little safe uh, board uh, experiment with a 555 timer uh, for servos. Get to know this circuit right here. This is really important. Uh, you can make this circuit uh, without an oscilloscope, and as long as you can make this circuit, then you can control pretty much any servo that's been uh, modified and modified, speed controls for um, stuff like that. So it's just a uh, standard pulse train, and once you get that, you can uh, add a bunch of accessories to your board, and so you have something uh, nice and neat like this, so you can experiment with uh, servos. The first thing we're going to do is the basic servo test with a uh, potentiometer. And you can see how uh, we'll get full swing with the potentiometer when you have the board built. And if you add a couple little light sensors like this as a uh, voltage divider, what you'll get is a light tracking uh, servo system. So you can use this for uh, you know solar cells or whatever. You can see the uh, stick interfering with the uh, sensor at the bottom. And we can also measure light intensity. Uh, and this is kind of a neat circuit because I got this set up so that uh, with darkness it, uh, it goes forward. And what's kind of interesting about this circuit, besides just how dynamic it is, is if you set it up like this with the ball in front of it and the light, it's going to start smacking that ball around. And so you can combine this with another servo that. Uh, uh, for light following, flight tracking, you can make a nice little two-dimensional uh, ball tracker. With this uh, idea, with the uh, simple servo driver, you can also make heat dampers. And this is a high gain amplifier that I got set up. So with a 555 timer and with an op amp, um, you know, anywhere you need a heat damper, um, do it in analog. Set it up with a voice control circuit. So if you uh, have animatronics and want it to follow your voice, or whatever, or have it uh, beat to the music, or whatever you want to do. And this is kind of need to get a little bend, resist bend sensor with the uh, op amp. And uh, this is pretty flexible. You can do a lot of different things with uh, this bend sensor. And uh, if you hook uh, the bend sensor in uh, w with the, with the uh, servo, you make kind of a little reflective, uh, little reflective, uh, reflexive system here that's just smacking a ball around. Really simple circuit. And uh, this shows, you know, I'm not, uh, uh, the board isn't being held down, but you can get a really high degree of control just with that uh, little bend sensor. A couple of bend sensors can get rid of the oscillations. And you can also do uh, other creative things, uh, make little grippers. Yeah, so that's just an op amp and a 555 timer. And uh, this was kind of neat. I made a little electric field sensor, tied that in. And a uh, little radar unit, a little toy radar unit you can get for like uh, 20, 30 bucks. And you can also add in um, oscillators, so you can have really simple little animatronics. So that's just a little sine wave oscillator, so anytime you need to make a little animatronic, it's just a... Uh, a uh, little oscillator, and if um, if you don't have an oscilloscope with the, that oscillator, you know, just use an op, uh, just use a uh, analog multimeter, and uh, so you don't need the uh, oscilloscope. And if you add in a bunch of stuff all together, this is a uh, couple uh, uh, oscillators tied in, so you get a little chaotic uh, animatronic. And since this is a 555 competition, I'm showing how you can use two 555 timers to make a little uh, animatronic. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways you could adjust it. 
Now, once you uh, play with simple sensors, you can move into PID systems. Uh, that's going to be covered in a different uh, video. Uh, integrate just slows the system down low pass. Derivative is just a high pass, measures the rate of change. Um, I did another video of how to uh, make simple balancing robots, and so you should um, check that one out because that um, really talks about the derivative control for balancing robots. And there's a lot of little PID systems that you can add in. Um, so now we'll be talking about uh, neural networks. Neural networks uh, is going to require its own video also. Basically, if you tie something into the 555 timer and if you um, adjust the resistance, uh, then you're basically making little neural networks. And so by just adding in a, a resistance, I can tune the system that's basically acting as a, a synapse. The synapse uh, with the system is just anytime you can vary the resistance between sensors, then uh, you're making a little neural network. And so even if you tie in a uh, sine oscillator, you can still uh, you know, vary the, the gain of that neural network. And uh, th there's many ways to do it. I'm going to have to uh, give a separate video because neural networks can be kind of a uh, challenging thing. Uh, here's a little uh, uh, self-organizing robot that uses neural networks to uh, follow a light. Um, but, uh, you know, you can see how, how complex it can get. Now, with oscillators, you can vary the uh, types of waveforms. And so you can get, uh, for animatronics or robots or something, uh, you know, this is a DC offsetting right there with a sine wave. Um, this is... Uh, what else are we doing here? I'm going to be doing, uh, yeah, duty cycle modulation of, of a sine wave. And so there's, uh, for robotics, there's just so much, uh, so many different waveforms you can uh, put into it. There's a square wave, which you'll find in beam robotics, and then back to a smooth uh, sine wave. So when you add all these things up for as a control system, you end up with an oscillating infinite state machine. Um, you know, hit the pause button so you can uh, read what's going on there. And as far as biomorphic robots, these are um, the different ways you can, um, you know, modulate them. And I'm going to have to go over a, a, a do another video on on um, some of this stuff. But uh, to help with the basics. You got to think about the ways you can modulate a sine wave oscillator, and by doing that, we're going to start with this little robot here that has two five five timers and one <coughs> and one um, sine oscillator. And by you know do different things like that. But here is the circuit where you can use the sine wave oscillators and um, get them to be up in, uh, ninety degrees out of phase and quadrature. And when you do that, you can get to end up with a little crawling robot like this. And uh, so here's the phase space of that single transistor, where it's tra uh, how it's tapped. So you get a nice 90 degrees phase um, phase space. And so if you add in uh, LDRs, you can start uh, getting this uh, robot to modulate. And uh, so that's just two 555 timers in a single transistor. And you can actually get that uh, robot to do quite a few things. And uh, see the position of the LDRs, how they're just off to the side. And even with uh, one transistor, it's possible to control three servos uh, to get all sorts of different uh, movements. That's like a wing, sea snake, that's uh, you know, a fish. And so there's a lot of different um, biomorphic type of robots. You get more uh, uh, <coughs> dynamic behavior, though, if you have different sine waves controlling each 5-5 timer instead of just one. And so here's two sine waves and two 5-5-5 timers. And uh, so it's a, it's a little more dynamic. You can see the bottom of it. So when you get it pretty much in quadrature, you get to get a good walking motion. And so by just adding a couple of LDRs, I can get that, uh, that robot to follow a light around. So it's two 555s and two transistors, I got a light following robot like that. Now here's what's real tricky. If you add a couple more transistors, you can get phase shifting. And so you can back phase the uh, sine wave oscillators together. 
And so this is a uh, life following robot with a, uh, with a switch. When it switch hits, it's reversing the phases of the two oscillators. And so you can get very dynamic, very lifelike robot. Highly chaotic behavior that would be very tricky to do with a low end uh, microcontroller. And uh, it just shows that you can do it with uh, eight servos. Kind of a pain to do with that many servos, though. And uh, get it to walk in its own space. <coughs> And, uh, you know, you can get all sorts of different uh, types of crawling robots, running robots. You can also, you know, do uh, regular uh, types of uh, rovers. But when you get into uh, coupling uh, oscillators, you get into chaos theory. And I'm going to have to, I'm going to do a, a separate video on uh, basically chaos theory for the uh, electronic hobbyists. And uh, hit the pause button so you can see, you know, some of the things that I, uh, I'm going to be going over. But I want to show you this circuit right here, where you can back couple two sine wave oscillators. So with the two transistor circuit, you can get very complex waveforms, P1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to also show how it can be chaotic. And so, let's see. It, uh, so there's digital. You really got to also use an analog oscilloscope because that's a 20 second tracing. It's really see basins of attraction. And um, so this would be like the phase space controlling the servos. Um, so you can get a lot of um, very highly dynamic behavior out of just two transistors controlling those 555 timers. And this is what a uh, that's what it looks like in our spectrum analyzer. And so even with two transistors, you can get very complex uh, waveforms. That's a P7. Um, and then you can also, um, with those two transistors, uh, you, you get chaotic pulse generators, which are useful for uh, coupling. Uh, there's a P2 um, trace. Um, there's P3. And you can also use the same circuits to uh, extract um, some of the frequency uh, information instead of just the amplitude information. Um, different ways to do it. And you can tie these uh, sine waves into digital systems. Uh, so this is really just the beginning. I'm going to have to do a lot more uh, videos to really uh, articulate everything that's going on, uh, particularly with biomorphic robotics. Um, but I have moved into plants, uh, using electronics with plants, and so there's a uh, Kentucky one, a pole bean. And if you zap it just right, you can get uh, in and all, it's much different. So I've been working with a lot of uh, plant hacking with electronics on top of uh, just uh, chaos and uh, biomorphic robots. And a lot of this stuff is easy, and I'll be kicking out more shortly.